So we discussed in brief about what are access points and how do we connect through them. We also discussed about what are rogue access points and why should we stay away from them. So now let's get back to the main deal which is how do we connect wirelessly. So I'm saying what is behind the scene that my computer or your computer can connect to the internet through that wireless network. With the wired ones it is easy, we just plug them in and it connects to the router and router to the internet. But what happens wirelessly using an access point, we are going to see that. So let's go over there. Whenever a new node wants to connect to a new wireless network, it undergoes a four-way handshake with the access point. Now you know what is an access point, but you don't know what is a four-way handshake and we are going to talk about this soon. This four-way handshake is necessary for each node to follow so that they can establish a secure wireless channel between the access point and itself. Before understanding this important procedure, let us understand some short terms related to it. So the first one is a nonce. A nonce is a random number which is generated by the client. By client we mean the nodes that are requested to be connected to the network. In this, in our case, my machine and your machine are going to be the client. So it is a random number which is generated by the clients that are requesting to connect to the access points. So your machine is also generating a code, a random code and the access point is also generating a random access code. This is used to uniquely identify a node by the access point. The next ones are S nonce and A nonce. These are the same as nonce but these are generated by the client station that makes a request and by the access point that fulfills that request respectively. So S nonce stands for the station nonce or the node that you're using that nonce and A nonce stands for the access point nonce that you are trying to connect to. So S nonce and A nonce are the numbers that are generated by client station and the access point respectively. Then we have S MAC and A MAC. Similarly, S MAC refers to the station MAC address and a max refers to the access point MAC address. So your node that have a MAC address and access point does have a MAC address and those are corresponding to S MAC and A MAC respectively. Now coming to the keys. Now in this four way handshake, the role of keys are significant. I suggest you jot down somewhere what are these keys and what do they do before going to this four way handshake because it's going to be very complicated. So the first key we have is PSK or the pre-shared key. This is the key which is shared beforehand to both the devices that is the client and the access point before the connection actually finalizes. So before you are finally connected to the access point, this key is generated which is known as a pre-shared key and it is known to both your client station as well as the access point beforehand. This pre-shared key as the name suggests is shared among the station as well as the access point and it is identical for both of them. PMK or the pairwise master key. When the PSK which was generated in the first step is passed through a key derivation function that is an algorithm, the resultant is a new key that is known as the pairwise master key. This means that the key generation algorithm that we are using converted the PSK or pre-shared key into the pairwise master key. So now we have a new key which is derived from PSK and that is the PMK. And additionally, the role of PMK or the pairwise master key is to calculate the message integrity code MIC for the messages. Now the third key is PTK, pairwise transient key. This key is a combination of PMK, pairwise master key and A nonce and S nonce and S mac and A mac. So you can see this is a combination of PMK plus A nonce that is the nonce of access point plus S nonce that is the nonce of your device or station plus S mac plus A mac, mac of your station, mac of access point respectively. So when we club all of these together, the algorithm generates the pairwise transient key or PTK. Now before going to the next key, I highly suggest you, you either take a snapshot of this slide or you just jot down what all those keys are and how they are derived because it is very useful. The next one is the GTK or the group temporal key. This key is used for encrypting and decrypting the messages that are sent by the client station to the node or from the node to the client station. So that means 
any messages whether it be unicast multicast or broadcast any messages that are going across the two devices they are encrypted and decrypted using gtk and the last one is the mic that i told you this is message integrity code and this is used for verifying the integrity of the message and by integrity of message we means that the message that was actually sent from the sender is as same as the message that is received by the receiver that means if the message has not been tampered the shape and size of the message will be the same as it has been received the message integrity code is used to confirm that the messages are coming from a legit and desired sender the first one is the psk pre shared key the second one is the pmk pairwise master key which we get by deriving the psk through an algorithm after that we have ptk which is derived by combining the pmk s nonce a nonce s mac and a mac the next one is the gtk group temporal key this is used for encrypting multicast unicast or any type of messages in the network and the last one is the message integrity code that is for checking the integrity of the messages